Hello, my name is Solomon Tumwesije and I'm the Managing Director at Apt Media. Apt Media is a video solutions company and we're in the business of growing other businesses using video. We started doing this business way back in 2008 and uh, we started by working very many weddings and quangelads. We've worked hundreds of those, but eventually found our right footing serving the business and corporate client. A video can capture a moment with sight, sound, and motion. It's the next thing to actually being there. And I'm also sure you've heard of the saying that a picture tells a thousand words. Now, a video typically captures 30 to 60 pictures per second. Do the math. That means a video can tell almost two million words in a minute. That is just a fun fact. But why is video a big deal anyway? Humans love videos. Okay, videos are more engaging. They are more memorable. They are more popular than any other type of content out there. It's estimated by Cisco that in 2022, more than 82% of the content online will be video. That said, videos as a means of storytelling and, and advertising is no longer an option it is actually a necessity. Let me give you some statistics. 81% of businesses use video as a marketing tool. Why? Because 59% of executives would rather watch a video than read text. 99% of people who use video as a marketing tool say they'll continue using video in 2021. What do we take away from all this? The future of business promotion is actually video. And everyone is doing video to promote their business. So it's a jungle out there. You have to stand out. And that's where we come in at Apt Media with our experienced team of creatives to work with you to grow your business with media. And along the way, we have been blessed to serve very many private businesses and also some large government organizations like URIA, UNRWA, you know, we've worked with World Bank, with United Nations, foundation and a few other people and the future for us is to see ourselves growing many smaller businesses using video because that's we believe that that's the best way they can put their word out there and sell their businesses we look forward to serving many more private business especially medium businesses to continue to grow and that way we can all move forward together Come on, come on, come on, studio audience. Yeah. Woohoo! Welcome to another segment of Business Garage. Every single week here at Worship Harvest, we bring you stories, kingdom businesses, Ugandan kingdom businesses. We are starting at home in Jerusalem, then we can end up in, you know, in Africa and beyond. But we want to show you that it's possible here in one of the most entrepreneurial nations in the world, not only to start, but to grow and to go big. And we bring you stories of people who are willing to tell you their journey unique in every way. And so this week we are, by the way, before I tell you what's happening this week, share the link. Those of you joining us online, share the link, share the link aggressively on all your social media platforms. Let someone know that they can watch in the comfort of their bed, taxi, car, office, they can catch some serious inspiration that is really uh, has the capacity to change their lives and even their mentality about business and kingdom wealth mentality. So every single week we bring you stories and this week we bring you the story of a gentleman who uh, he didn't come with his partner who is also his wife. Hey, she's here. I'm so sorry. Fuji is in the house. But please help make welcome Mr. Solomon Tumwesije, who is the CEO, President, what, 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 all those things of Thank Apt Media. Welcome, welcome, Sebo. Thank now you, that Bisley. Fuji is here, yes. we can talk. Yeah, yeah, we can. And I'm loving the view from up here. You love the you view. <laughs> wow. So Solomon, Solomon Tumwesije is, uh, is, is the team leader, really, at Apt Media. And he'll be sharing with us his story today. It's a very, it, I like the stories here at Business Garage. None of them are the same. It's different. And I know that it's going to really inspire you greatly. So Solomon, why don't we start from the beginning, from the beginning. Uh-huh. So here you are in something called Apt Media. You're going to tell us what it's about. People might have missed the introduction video. But tell us about the beginnings. Um, where did you work before you 
worked at apt media what what has your journey been for business did you because like many potellas they work then in the middle of their work they couldn't take it anymore maybe at an office uh was your journey as we hear many business people's journeys okay um i i I believe some people may relate to my journey, but Apt Media is basically a, a professional photography um, and video production house. And we say we are in the business of, we actually in the business of growing other businesses using video. Um, but that's not what we set out to do many years ago. We've been doing this since 2008. Uh, that's 13 years now. But wow! Yes, we have to stop and celebrate. That's a big deal. Yeah, but, but we started out basically wanting to um, shoot and cover decent video for weddings, just yes. video. Um, and from the very first event, from the first ev uh, wedding event that we covered, I learned very early that video and photo go together all the time, especially for events. Um, we got a referral from a friend we had just met. It was at Serena. I can't forget that, because at the moment, we didn't have tents, but the moment the, the, the bridal team put the knife on the cake, the skies opened. No. And our, our, our life feed setting was still not in one piece. Many things on the table. So what we did is get the cloth on the table and basically wrap it up and move it to the nearest shelter. So that's another whole long story. <laughs> um, never been in formal employment a day in my life. Wow. But um, never really went to school to study video production or photography. What did you study? Just curiosity. Ah, oh, yes. I, I, I loved my math B3 from, from, from the word go. I was, I, was, I was excellent at math. The people who were with me in school know I was my children are watching the me thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, let's you, not you go there. Explain. <laughs> but at the university, I wanted to do statistics. I missed statistics by maybe a point or two. Then I got quantitative economics. So I did quantitative economics. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and, and while I was doing it, I thought, what will I be? An auditor at uh -huh. PwC, maybe working in Bank of Uganda and all. But on the other hand, my father was always, maybe not intentionally, he was always raining this pressure on us. I know he didn't intend to of, when do you grow up, you people, and help me with this business. So I grew up in a business family um, um, from the time we were young, was shipped off to boarding school much earlier on, much earlier than most people. Because mm. I was boarding school, what, in P3 or something. Yeah, that's much earlier. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Chris Kawesa says it's too late. I think he was in <laughs> nursery. <laughs> but every time we got holidays, well, um, our home was a kind that keeps us at home. Uh, never got to interact much with the neighbors apart from going to the farm and all that. And maybe if I live in talk about that, my dad always wake up at 6 a.m., go milk the cows. Milking the cows means... Of, of course, the, the, the workers in the farm would not let us milk them. You go in the, in the farm, fetch them, then you measure how many liters, then take records. Yes. Uh, so that was it up to some point. My older brother had grown and he was getting naughty and he said, but daddy, are you saying, are you training us to be milkmen when we grow up? What are you doing? <laughs> And then he said, you know, I know when you grow, you'll own your own farms and things like that, but you need to know how these things operate so that no one comes and, and, uh, and, and starts telling you otherwise. And I think that's how I grew up to be a hands-on person in everything that I do. Um, so I'm very hands-on with equipment and things like that. But um, I digress. So... Um, it is okay. <laughs> um, my... my our family business, my parents' business was selling fuel. They were doing Caltex dealerships then. Oh. Many young people in the room don't know what Caltex, Caltex is now, but... It was a petrol station. Yeah, it, 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 it was eventually bought by Total. So during like P7 VAC, S4 VAC, that's when he would let us go to the petrol station and be there. 
Uh, just stand at the pump, see how they are pumping the fuel, never let you be accountable at the pump, lest you make shortages and then the other workers start saying it was you and then he can't punish you. Uh -huh. But then also he taught us records in the office, how to count the money, how to balance at the end of the day and so on and so forth. So that's P7 VAC, S4 VAC. Now S6 VAC, um, um, the, the business acquired another petrol station on Hoima Road, it was a Caltech, so that's when I got deeply involved in business. And um, so thrown my S6 vacas at the station, wow. uh, doing the supervisor work, going to the bank, banking, he always went with me. He was up country most of the time, but then I had a manager I was reporting to then. I go to the head office, order fuel. So within about second year, I was, I knew how to run the station. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, the gentleman I was reporting to around that time passed away. So I, okay. I, I was running the station full on my own. I was making the orders, signing the checks, balancing every day and all at 5 p.m. <laughs> uh, uh, drive to Makere <laughs> and, and do my evening course of uh, QE wow. and um, finished that year, graduated. Oh, yes, I told. Yes, after graduation, got married immediately. Uh, no, when he says immediately, can you explain how immediately did you get married, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Tumwesiji? So, um, uh, graduation, by then graduation was no longer one or two days, it was a whole week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So my graduation was on Thursday, and our Kwanjula was on Saturday. Yeah, the day when people that. say immediately, it was two days <laughs> after graduation. <laughs> Didn't waste time. Yeah. Hey, so, but, but, but Fuji is a young woman. Anyway, today is business garage. Even me, I'm young. Yeah, but did you get her out of school? <laughs> she hadn't graduated yet. <laughs> Uh -huh. So you, you 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 get straight out of campus. Yeah. No wasting time. You graduated. You married a young woman. And uh -huh. and and as in business, I, I I remember the fellow dealers at at the head office would go for conferences. They are all older gentlemen, and they would look at me as this child. But then I would also I I made lots of connections then. The people who are working at the head office then are still my friends up to today. They always looked at me as hey, this young boy. I actually remember a very good friend of ours now, it's a lady. She was the customer care manager. She always looked at me and looked at me and said, I really want my younger brother to meet you. You're, you're, you're really doing good stuff. Wow. But then, um, so <laughs> weird. I still feel young because from a very <laughs> early age, I, I always felt like the youngest person in the room. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, and it catches up with you even when you're a grown man with family, you still think you're young. <laughs> yeah, so that's about 2006. Uh, we had our first child around 2008 in May. And uh, by then, my, my new set of parents were, were running a business of video production in Dar es Salaam where they lived. And they, they, they asked us at some point, um, do you think you guys can do things with this equipment? I, I think they were very overwhelmed with work and all and said, you know what, let's, let's, let's see what we can do. So they sent a couple of cameras, you know, a mixer here and there, and it was here and we're looking at it. <laughs> now, the only thing I knew about the business was to use a small Sony camera, you know, those little ones mm -hmm, that mm. are like this size. Yes. I, I always had many of those. My mom had gifted me and all us, more or less the photographer in the family looking back. <laughs> uh, I don't appear in many group photos because ah, I'm the one who took take, them. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was always a gadget person. I remember at, um, when the parents would go to work during the holidays, then we go now find video deck, put in the tape play. Then one evening my dad came and there was something wrong with it and he didn't even ask questions. Out of the many brothers, it was me, mm. lie down. No way. <laughs> because <laughs> he just knew who it was. Yeah, it has to be you. <laughs> That day it wasn't me. <laughs> but looking back, I was always a gadgety person. Um, so Fuji is very organized. She yes. plans, she's 
very um, <laughs> me I am let's get this done yeah um, so we got our first wedding referral we did it we did it well so you I, get this equipment from yes. your parents-in-law yes it shows up you've never been into videography photography no. nothing no and you, you guys decide that you're going to start a business yes with this equipment. we were blessed that it came with a, a gentleman I remember his name he was called Faustin yes he didn't speak much English I didn't speak Swahili at all. <laughs> and he was supposed to take me through how this stuff works. In Swahili. And we figured it out. <laughs> the, the, the editing basics that I know, I know I learned from Faustin. Mm. And, and of course from YouTube and all that stuff. The people these days are very lucky because all the resources are online. Yeah, yeah. So we learned how to use this equipment. It's like we learned how to, it's like I learned how to drive in a Ferrari mm -hmm. because it was very high end equipment and of course we crushed it. <laughs> oh, just no. like any other learner, made lots of mistakes. That was also around that time we were transitioning from analog systems to digital. So the cameras we're using then were those little tapes that you have to put in a deck and convert to digital, then edit on a computer. Wow. It wasn't that bad, because before that, it was the bigger tapes. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah. now there were smaller tapes. Yes. Lord. So eventually, we, 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 we moved straight into digital. None of that equipment worked for a... Um, all that equipment is no longer working now. We had to get new equipment and wow. all that. We had to go get photography equipment like that same year we traveled to Malaysia shipped we knew we wanted to open a photo studio mm. so we opened uh, we brought in the equipment sat with it for like a year I think because we were looking for the ideal space where to put the studio One year waiting for an ideal space uh, B3 that's what happens when you go into <laughs> things when you're not prepared <laughs> um, so <clears throat> My working before came in handy because we always had some money here and yes. there. And um, yeah, so finally opened a photo studio at Silvercade, large space, I think 100 square meters. And we knew campus is near, would get guys walking in, they were not coming. Oops. And uh, <laughs> we said, you know what? I think the reason is even our friends were not coming. Oops. So whoever knew <laughs> that this way a studio is this, ah, but man, Jami, one day, gear, Bombo Road, YMC, ah, ah, too much. So I said, you know what? Let's look for a decent place. So we went to Garden City. Ooh. <laughs> Someone has clapped. <laughs> There's a problem there. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to Garden City, stayed a couple of years, and the turning point at Garden City, we're getting many walk-ins, but these many walk-ins were passport photos. Yes. <laughs> The bank was upstairs, so you get in the bank. Uh, do you have a passport photo? No. no. Studio downstairs. downstairs. So, <laughs> so we, we, uh, around that time, we were getting corporate work and all that. So we had this, actually, our very first big deal, they gave us a deposit of 10 million. Nice. I went to Barclays at Garden City, withdrew it, walked to Metropolitan Forex Bureau. It's just in the corner. The rate I remember it, it was two thousand five hundred, four thousand dollars. Landlord's yeah, 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 yeah. office. Oh no. We were not even paying for that month. You were paying arrears. arrears. You guys, this is how not to do your business. <laughs> so walked back to office. I called my my manager, I still work with him now. I said, Josh we are missing something. Yeah. He said, what? <laughs> I said, the people who pay the bills here never come here. Wow. When they need you, they summon you to their boardroom. Mm -hmm. Even when they need a favor, oh, I misplaced this DVD, please make me another one. Okay, you can come pick it. No, 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 there's so much jam at Garden City. Let me send a driver. I said, why are we even here? Mm. The people we serve by being here are not... They, they pay your transport and lunch every day. So all we need is a space where we can just edit. Wow. Because we know that our big clients will always call us to find them. At this point, yes. we've made a name for ourselves. They will always call us. And 
and that was it. So at that point, first instinct was, you know what, we have a lot of space at home, let's go work from home. Wow. But then at that point, we had just had our last born, or uh, acting last born. Or acting last born, but they've been acting for seven years, so I'm not <laughs> sure they can still, they can lose that position. Yeah. Um, we had just had her, I think she was a year or two, and I said, no, this is not the space where I want guys to be coming in every day to work and go out. This, is, this will not be home, it will be the whole purpose. Uh, so, thank God we had been blessed with a property on Makere Hill Road, so we requested one of the tenants that was not very cooperative to <laughs> give us the space, and we moved in. And, and, and it was a lot, it was a lot cheaper and indeed none of our clients has ever come there. <laughs> they always summon us to go and meet them and get concepts right and so on and so forth. But it's been, it's been, it's been a long journey. Wow. It's been a long journey. And, 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 and how, we, how we knew that we had to serve the, the business and corporate client along the way, like almost four years ago, bumped into this thing called BNI, and it, it sucks all the uh, business wisdom out of you. <laughs> week in, week out, you have to think critically about your business, break it, out, break it up in very many little chunks, so you think about critically. So mm -hmm. one of the exercises we did is list your last 10 clients. Wow, list That's your how last you know. 10 clients. Mm. If you want to know who your target client, go list your last 10 clients and there's not a wedding in there. Wow. And that's when we said, hold on, maybe this thing is not, this wedding thing is not ours. And um, um, we moved on from then to define our target, our target market and our target client better and better along the way. Wow. Yeah. What great wisdom right there. So many, so much to learn from this story. Yeah. I, I love what you just said about sometimes we define our target customer by who we want to serve, not who we are actually serving, serving right yes. now. Like when you list your last 10 customers and you're calling yourself wedding photographers and videographers and then you list your last 10 clients and there's no wedding. Yes then you're sort of like, actually, maybe we should be realizing that our target customer is not that customer yes. and pay more attention to this one. Yeah. Your, your story has had so much, I think, for the young business person and even the people who have been in business a while to start seeing gaps and question a few things in the businesses we are running. Mm. And it's, we've laughed at you a lot, which is good. Now we can laugh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but so I have a question for you. Here you are, you sort of, someone could say you, you guys inherited a business because someone, you were not there dreaming of doing this. No. You handed something, you had to grow it and establish yourselves yes. in the market as real players. Um, two questions, maybe one, why did you stick with it? Why did you stick with this, with all that was happening? It wasn't like it was thriving from the beginning. Mm. You're moving from one place to another. You're, the business is clearly not profitable at that point. You're serving a few people here and there but you've stuck with it 13 years. Now, yes. you may not know the statistics business-wise in this nation, but 1% of businesses make it to 10 years because 10% of, of the ones which begin go towards 10 years and then 1% go beyond, 10% uh, of the 10% go beyond uh, that 10-year mark. So that's a 1% survive. We start so many businesses. So you're in a very small percentage that we are trying to change the story for. But one, why did you stick with it? And then two, if you could speak to a business person Right now, what would you say to them are some of the core things in your experience? I should yes. say, if you pay attention to these, mm. I think that they can help really move you forward as a business okay. person. How we stuck with it, I think one day led to another, and I was enjoying it. We're enjoying it. Um, I think we're just getting a kick out of, 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 of doing great work, producing great things. I would say... What made us stick with it all the way is we enjoyed it and we're meeting new people. And I, I think I'm the kind of person who doesn't like to disappoint. Mm. So um, you keep doing good work and more orders keep coming in and you do them and you do them. And then you learn uh, big lessons along the way. We loved it. For someone starting the business, I would say, please start small. It sounds like 
it sounds like like cliche something people say yes but the reason is when you're beginning you're going to make mistakes yes. big time and and you had better make mistakes in a small way yes, than please. make them in a big way <laughs> um yeah so 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 for me start small and then grow and then um deliver what you promise at the very least no matter what when i say no matter what i mean i have had moments where you send in a quotation it's you see it's not going to cut it the default setting is let's cut corners and still make money no don't because the moment you do that you're dead in business so deliver what you promise no matter what um you you lose some you win some you win some you lose some so don't and 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 the other thing is went in this business to do it differently i learned earlier on that many of the people in the business were um never studied it never went to the university let's say it's something they settled for along the way mm -hmm. and many times that comes with serious unprofessionalism and i would say at apt media we we want to do this different we want to change the industry you walk to an event especially because of the way um camera crew and all that carry themselves dressed yes. so you get disrespected by default hmm. i still i still see clients telling me the event starts at 8 a.m i am there at 7 7 30 and the event actually starts at 10 and i'm like oh, no. really and 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 i don't really br blame them to some degree because that's how they have been yes. treated made to believe that these guys behave they never come on time so we we work hard to do things differently and 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 change the reputation of the industry from the way we carry ourselves dress and and deliver the service mm -hmm. um I, I, I dream of a time when our industry is as respected as doctors and engineers and all that because we put in a lot of work, mm -hmm. a lot of thought, mm -hmm. especially when you're serving the business, you have to understand what they want to achieve before you point a camera and shoot. Oh. Because at the end of the day, your production, your video needs to serve their purpose, yes. bring them more customers and tell their story. Mm -hmm those who are struggling to tell what they do because a picture can help you explain it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So much wisdom from Solomon. One more thing before I hand you over to Mr. Chris Kawesa. Numbers. How many people is Apt Media uh, employing right now? How many customers do you find you had you have the privilege to serve on average okay. in a year? Just give us some so, clues. Um, my, 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 my answers come with stories. <laughs> when we started the business, I'll make it quick because I see we are running out of time. Mm -hmm. We knew that we wanted young people who are not very experienced. Mm -hmm. So we got most of our staff from a film school. There's a film school in Rubaga. I think it's still there. So as they came, they, they wouldn't last long. A couple of months, maybe a year or two. And we lost all of them to TV stations. <laughs> not a company, not, not other employer. Okay, just TV stations, Bunyoro TV, NTV, UBC. In fact, when I walk in any of these TVs, they are all over the place. Yeah. And, and I feel proud because we trained them. So we figured what was happening is the film school didn't have a lot of equipment to teach them. Uh -huh. They would get lots of theory, come to us. We had very good equipment. They practice, they get good at this. They go to TV, that was their dream. Start a school. <laughs> You say that in front of Fuji, I'll never hear the end of it. <laughs> because it's something we've been toying with for a very long time. Or even Dr. Duff. Mm -hmm. She's, she's oh, I call her Dr. Duff. Yes. Uh, Mugabe. Mm. Yeah, so we'll start a school. Yay. And, and um, so our staff, we, we run with a lean team, mostly managerial. And because most of our work or all of our work is usually project based. Yeah. We have, um, most of our staff are like on retainer, so we call them in to run projects and go, run projects and go. So we have a wide range of, 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 of team that we always run with, but not really full-time. The, the full-time team is really lean and managerial. So um, numbers, we've, we've, we've served many clients. We've, we, we've served many clients, and most of the events that we do now 
we have like a live streaming event every week or two and because that's the thing lockdown taught us that you can't have many people in the room mm -hmm. so for the conferences workshops that used to have 300 people auditorium up these ends now they can't so you have to put it out there it has to find your viewers on their gadgets um, um, so so we do lots of those now and 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 lockdown was another thing altogether but it but it opened up new doors for our businesses you have to keep looking at your business thinking it um, looking looking at it critically and tweaking it to follow the direction of the market yeah. so that's how we end up in 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 in, in doing lots of um, um, live stream events um, highly profitable now yes because initially when we began you know you 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 try to crank your uh, rates so low to get events and all but um, in in the service industry you need to be making profit of, of 50 100 percent to stay in because mm. um, uh, um, the work is not like selling a hundred pairs of shoes every day it's one event and it takes days now most clients want to cost your time for the two hours you spend in their room they don't know that you spent two days thinking about mm. those two hours and then many others later perfect he you see he didn't give me numbers he told me stories <laughs> but i'll hand you over to mr chris kawesa at this point please help me welcome pastor chris who is in charge of business garage here Thank, Thank you, you so much, Pastor. <laughs> uh, Solo, we will finally call you. We've been hiding for a long time. Uh, we'll hide, finally have you. Yeah, yeah I... I, I... Yeah, people tell so many stories. That's his business. Wow. That, that... <laughs> when he answers his stories, yeah. he's, on, he's doing his He's work. doing his business. Yeah. So, Solo, let me first comfort you. P3 is not early. Hmm. Yeah, P3 is not early. First, we need to go next week. Almost, that's it. Yeah? P3 is not early. We learned so many lessons. Yeah. Now, one of the things that uh, you are lucky to have had is you started business very early. Yeah. Like that up from your story. You mm. started business very early, and that gave you a lot of experience. Yeah? yeah. So you had a very good opportunity. I will not ask you if you are doing the same for your children. But I know you are. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, so many lessons there, you, start, you told us to start small. Um, so that you, you make mistakes, you make them, you make them small. Yeah. Yes. There's some, uh, especially young people want to start a big business. Yes. And you're prone to making lots of mistakes. So one of the lessons there is start small, that we heard from you. Then I like the fact that you're working with your wife. Yes. Uh, Fuji, we celebrate you for that. Um, <laughs> husband and wife working together is not easy, but it's also one of the best things you can ever do. Uh, I'm curious to know what happened to Altex, to the fuel station. You ah, can tell us oh the yes. end of that story. Oh, yes, I yes. figured. And what lessons I, you learned from that? Because, I mean, you should be doing totals now. So yes. what happened there and what are the lessons there? So, so, so I was looking at the clock, so I skipped that part. But let me make it quick. So I um, started running that station full-time from around 2002 when I was joining campus to we left it around 2010. And that's because be, around that time, 2006, 7, 8, thereabout, I realized that's when I think government policy opened up for anyone and everyone who had the resources to import their own fuel. So the route we were on uh, from, from town, Hoima Road, when we were running the station profitably and uh, well, had two, three stations. Now at that time, everyone was bringing in, there were like eight or 10 stations. So it was not as profitable as it used to be. And you will realize that uh, these days, the, the, the good business in fuel is either with the multinationals that are really big with big monies or the people bringing in their own fuel. Now, I think at that point, we're not ready to start bringing in our own fuel. And then also the transition between Caltex and Total kind of messed with their business relationships and way of doing business because um, new company came in with a totally different way of doing business and that's around the time I just got married and I think wanted a bit of independence you know the living and cleaving kind of thing mm -hmm. 
Mm. And so we, at the time, we were starting our own things. But stayed involved in the family business for fuel up to now. Uh, my mom and my siblings are in it full time, yes. Okay, awesome. I'll talk about, you mentioned government changed some regulations there. I'll talk about that uh, later. You talked about uh, your business model. You had, at that time, you, the bank was sending passport photo clients yes. downstairs. Yes. yes. And for you, had set up a huge place. Yes. You were paying a lot of rent, but you are not your actual clients. Yes. So you were running a business model that was not right. Yes. And you changed that. <laughs> yes. And today, uh, you find that we need to check our business models to see if they are fitting. Otherwise, we'll have lots of costs piling up. That's very What's true. What's your business model for the future, considering what's happening now? People are making their own selfies, selfie videos, what? <laughs> How's that selfies. affecting your industry? <laughs> The other day I heard of a guy who, who is a farmer, but he's doing, uh, he's teaching people online and he's making a lot of money from YouTube and all those, that should be your business. So what's your business model for the future considering the current technological uh, uh, developments? So uh, um, actually I think it was last week I blogged about that. It, I have been thinking it and thinking about it a lot and thanks to Worship Harvest, making everyone author, as I said, I'll start blogging about these things too. Yay. So I, I, I think the smartphone, that's what I was saying, that it, it's the single piece of technology that killed the photo studio business single-handedly. Hmm. Because when you wanted a photo, you would walk into a studio, take it with a friend. Now you take a selfie, share it, end of story. And, and um, and it gets worse because you don't even need to print it anymore. You don't need to put it in an album because you shared it already anyway. So what we have done is also embrace the technology. We know that your phone is full of photos and God forbid this phone gets stolen. If you don't have a cloud account, all your memories are gone. So some of our services that we offer is what we call the post-production services. If you go on a holiday with Gene and the, and the boys, and you come back with lots of videos and photos in there, you can give it to us and we put together um, a short video, something that you will not have to scroll through 300 times looking at the photos. So we also know that people use their phones to, to, to capture their own memories. So we help you put it together in something decent that you can quickly archive or keep and share with your friends. But they still need for the professional touch of, 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 of this whole photography and video thing. For example, if you have a conference, your smartphone won't pull it off. Even when you think, even when you have a very good one, you know, the latest iPhones and all that capture great images, you, you won't have the resources or the human resource to stand and capture the event throughout and all that. So we still bring our professional touch to to the industry and the clients and the business. Um, we also, um, being in business for a while now and meeting many business people, I know many people who struggle to explain what they do in business, or even like a Dagan Bragan, you talk of Brago, Dagan Bragan, but people can't quite picture what it is about. So when we come in, we help show what you can't explain in your words. The visuals, uh, they explain it best. Like I said in the video earlier, a picture tells a thousand words and a hundred video millions. Yeah. All right, thanks, Solomon. Uh, we don't have much time, so uh, we'll talk more in the business lounge. So from here, we can cross the business lounge and have more conversations there. Uh, over to you, Pastor B3, and thank you, Solomon, for wow. sharing this Wow, we're real out of time, man. But someone asked a burning question that I think would be nice to answer very quickly. What, has, what was and has been the impact of marrying Ali and not being formally employed, having no safety net of a salary? What was the impact of that? Do you think there was an impact for you, for your business, being that sort of man? Okay, I didn't see that coming. Two cause... days after graduation. Oh my gosh. Now we are in fireplace. But anyway. <laughs> no, this is about up to media. Do you think it has had an impact on you as a business person? Having yes, no formal it... employment, marrying Ali. Okay. Fuji was formally employed. She yes. had an amazing job, 
who are on health insurance, I enjoyed it while it lasted. <laughs> <laughs> Had all our children with health insurance. Uh-huh. And there was, there was that bit of safety net because there was a guaranteed level of income at the end of the okay. month. And uh, it came with amazing benefits, uh, travel and all that stuff. Um, but, but that's not it. I think God has, has, has been with us from day one. And this also sounds like a thing people say all the time. But I can't quite explain. There's no other way I can explain it. Even when I didn't pray, I feel like I was highly favored from the word go. Now, I don't know how that's helpful to anyone. It is. But... Uh, I also used to say, or still say, that I don't know how business people with, let's say, no retainer contracts survive in the business without trusting God. Because if the month starts and you don't know who is going to call, your phone is always charged, all you're doing is waiting for calls, you're waiting for customers to walk in, how do you even credit yourself Mm -hmm. (laughs) for earning so much at the end of the month and paying your people and them looking after their f- families. Mm. So, and, 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 and I thank Worship Harvest and, and the whole Worship Harvest c- community for teaching us these things and thinking about them cautiously. Because you have to keep God as your partner in business. You have to go to him, put the business to him and trust that he will. You know, if he's your board of directors, then he, your business interests are his interests. That's right. And give him what is due to him or even more. Mm. And, and, and the business will thrive because if you don't, then you're not, it's like not paying your board. I mean, how, how, how do you expect the business to thrive if you're not giving your partners what is due to them? Wow. That, that, that's how I look at it. You got more than that's you asked for. Let's appreciate Solomon. Thank you so much Thank for you. sharing your story and your journey with us. And of course, we never end our broadcast without giving you the opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. We know that he's the source of ideas. He's the source of sustenance. Even in the tough times, he gives wisdom and direction and you just heard what solomon said he doesn't know how people survive in business without trusting in god and knowing him and so i want to give you that opportunity today right here at business garage to say yes to jesus to a relationship with jesus christ it's very simple you believe in your heart confess with your mouth that he is lord and just like that it sounds crazy but that's how simple it is so why don't you go ahead if you want if today you're saying you know what i think i want to start a relationship with this god these people are talking about want to help you do that just pray this simple prayer after me say lord jesus today i come to you and i accept you as my lord and savior i believe that i am born again take my life and do something significant with it in jesus name Amen. 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 If you prayed that prayer, we know that you are born again. It may not feel like it, but something has completely changed in your life. Please call the number on your screen, and the number is 0775 There's a pastor on the other end of the line waiting to connect with you and connect you to a loving family that will make sense of what has happened. And so... Please call that number, send a message. They will be able to connect with you. Thank you once again for joining us for Business Garage. We'll see you again next week, 7.30 a.m. here on our social media platforms or in the room. I want to remind you, you can come live to Worship Harvest Nalia and connect at the Business Lounge with our guests for the day. You would even get to meet Fuji, who he has talked about, his wife, and all the other business people who are here today. We connect over coffee, tea, chocolate, hang out, share a snack for like 30 minutes as we connect. And, and you don't know who you'll meet here. So I want to encourage you to be in the room physically. If I would tell you the kind of people in the room right now, you would feel, yeah, you've missed business people. There are people in this room, serious business people, who you can learn from free of charge, exchange cards. So please be in the room. You're a business person. Come early. 
come in, hang out, connect, you know, at the business lounge here at Worship Harvest Nalia, 7.30 a.m. Of course, we'll see you later at 9 a.m. and 11.15 a.m. at all our locations, hosting centers, and on our social media platforms as we continue our series called This is Church. See you later. Thank you for joining us. See you next time. Bye.